Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Isaiah Tayebwa. Uh, I fellowship from St. Luke's Church in Tinda and I'm part of the youth ministry and I'm also serving God as a cell leader in the cell ministry. I welcome you all as we are trying to discuss together this topic which is trusting God through change or transition, uncertainty, job change, through treatment, losing people, school and etc. Almighty God, we thank you for this wonderful time. We are before your presence. And all the viewers out there, Lord, I pray that you will trigger their mind to understand what it takes to trust you and why they need to trust you, O Lord, King of glory. Let your name be glorified in the entire youth ministry of Church of Uganda and all the people at large that will see this video. May they be blessed because they came. May your name be glorified. We pray all this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So this topic comes in a moment where very many people have been uh, shaken. Their faith has been shaken. Uh, many people have lost their jobs. Uh, many people have lost their loved ones. Others have waited for schools to open and the schools have not been opening. But before I dive deeper, let me first highlight you the major words, the major topics in this, in this sharing. So trusting, according to Google Trust, it is a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. But then also there is a biblical approach to trust and specifically trusting in God. So the biblical understanding I tried to get was trusting in God means that whatever we suffer in the end can be used for ultimate good. Many times you're trusting in friends, but how many times have you chosen to trust God? So trusting God comes with a choice of having faith in God. There are many things that you would have chosen to trust in, but you have chosen to trust God. That is what is very important. It's actually amazing that amidst that you can have friends to call, you can have relatives to call, but you choose. There's an element of choice. For those of you who did economics, you understand choice, opportunity, cost. Hmm? Opportunity cost, we always defined it as an alternative for a when choice is made. So if you decide to make a choice, that is really good. So when you choose trust God, what, do you, what are you intending to do? Of course, there are things that will come. It comes at a cost. It never comes on the silver plate. You must decide to be patient and be able to wait upon the Lord. So I've been thinking about this and praying and something kept on coming to my mind. When we trust God, do we feel anxious? Do we? And what does the word of God say? Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, do not be anxious of anything, but all in all, make your request be known to God through prayer and supplication. And with thanksgiving, let your goodness be known to all. In other words, are you anxious of anything that you feel anxiety is taking you over? But then you remember you have to trust in the Lord. Trusting God is more than a feeling. It is a choice to have faith in what he says. And when your feelings or circumstances overtake you, you have to choose to believe in him. I know you would want to say maybe if I trust my feelings. You don't have to pretend to anyone. You don't have to pretend. Trusting in God is not about ignoring your feelings or reality. It's not about pretending that everything is okay when it is not. Trusting God is living a life of belief in obedience to God even when it is difficult. The moment you decide to choose to trust God, things are not easy. But then that should be the number one issue to do. You should never think of anything. Nothing else should ever cross your mind when you, when you, when you are faced with any difficulties. Because I'm assuming now you lost your job. What is left for you in this country? Like the cost of living is very high for people who stay in the main city. You have nothing to eat. How will you survive if you don't have a job? And you don't have enough savings because you blew them because you're in lockdown. But then again, let me take you to First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. So now we are going to cover how to trust God. First Peter chapter 5, verse 7. I'm reading from the Berean Study Bible. It says, cast all your anxiety on him because, because he cares for you. I told you, you already have, you're already anxious. And the moment you start feeling anxious, you're losing it. 
But then the Bible says, cast all your anxiety on him. Of course, you have to be anxious. As you're a man, you have emotions. We have this big consciousness. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That is NIV. Let me take you to another scripture in Psalm. Psalms. Psalms chapter 56, verse 8. Psalms 56, verse 8, the same. I'm also reading from BSB version. You have taken account of my wanderings. You put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? If you read from NIV, it says, You keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. I don't know how many of you have read this scripture, but it's, it speaks to our hearts. It speaks to our hearts, knowing that he keeps track of our sorrows. So if you're feeling anxious, the number one thing that should come into your mind is to know that he has collected all your tears in your bottle and he has recorded each of them in your book. So it is up to you to now raise your faith and choose to trust him. Of course, you trust him with his word. If you have not read God's word, you will be swept off your feet. You can show trust in God by talking about your feelings and circumstances with him. The good and hard through prayer. If you ever feel you're being swayed away in your faith and you don't know where to turn left and right, God is always the answer. I know we've seen memes everywhere where someone is answering a question in mathematics and is trusting God is always the answer. <laughs> yes, God is the answer. Always is the answer and that is very true. So when you ever feel you're troubled in your mind, talk to God in prayer. And the interesting subject, the interesting factor here which I found amazing was Jesus was also in a similar situation like us. Let's go together in Mark, the Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 14. Mark, chapter 14, verses 34 to 36. I'm still reading from BSB. Then he said to them, My soul is consumed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour would pass from him. Abba Father, he said, all things are possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Jesus was overwhelmed but by what was before him. And you know the solution he chose? He went straight to his father. I'm imagining, I want you to make time and read this kind of excerpt of scripture. What was going on in Jesus' mind? Knowing that he's the son of God, he's God, but he's overwhelmed. He was troubled in his heart, but he decided to go to his father because he knew he was the only source of solution. And now as a carnal man, you feel you can manage, you feel your relatives can help you. No, they will not. Your parents cannot help you as well. You have to make a deliberate choice to trust God. And I know I might have maybe talked to you briefly. I've always emphasized prayer. But let me just share with you practical steps that I feel are important for you to trust God. The first practical step is seek truth in scripture. The word of God is the truth. Other voices are liars. Your voices you hear in your head, they are lies. First, seek the truth in the scripture, and that is the word of God. And everything I've highlighted here, I've mentioned a number of scriptures. Meditate on them. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. That is the truth in the word of God. Because God has come out for us. We have a number of testimonies. You, you who, who is watching, you have a number of testimonies. You have seen tremendous things God has done in your life. Another practical step. Confess your unbelief. Now this is, let me actually bring uh, another example in, chap in Mark, in the scripture. Mark chapter 9, uh, verse 24. Immediately the boy's father cried out, I do believe, help my unbelief. I know you, you can, you, if you make time, you understand all the, how, how all this uh, scripture came to about. The man was asking Jesus to, to help let me read for you. From childhood, he said, I often throw him into the fire or into the water trying to kill him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. If you can, that is 23. 
of, of Mark 9. He echoed Jesus, all things are possible to him who believes. Verse 24, immediately the boy's father cried out, I do believe, help my unbelief. You're not going to be up there that you will immediately believe when challenges have struck you. But confess your unbelief, your, your unbelief and trust God. Because this man, of course, he was, he was swept off his feet because he said, if you can, and he was talking to Jesus. But if you, if you appreciate that you have doubts in your heart, but then you choose to trust God, God will understand and give you whatever you're seeking to do with him. Practical number three, share with believers in the community. Share with firm believers in your community, whatever you're going through. You feel you're being swept off your feet. You, you're struggling to trust in the Lord. You feel you can do it on your own. You have plan B. Get people who can be your accountability partners in this work of faith and share with him. Let me also read Philemon, Philemon chapter 1, Philemon, Philemon chapter 1, verse 6. It says, I pray that your partnership in the faith may become effective as you fully acknowledge every good thing that is ours in Christ. I take great joy and encouragement in your love because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the saints. There is a powerful, a powerful Acknowledgement when you have fellowship, when you stand with your brother, if you share with them and you know these people are firm believers. There is a reason why I'm emphasizing the word people who are grounded, firm believers. Because if you appeal to a person who is not purely grounded, that's when they will tell you, no, I think I know someone who can do it cheaply. I know someone who can take you to witchcraft and all your things are solved. You have been trusting God, you don't have children. And you say, I know someone that is... A flag you need to watch out that is a red flag if you have to share with someone who is an unbeliever or he's not a strong believer practical step number four is remember god and spend time with him i know we choose to spend time with our friends but how many times do you choose to spend time with god we will have 24 hours in a day but all the 24 hours will elapse when you have not even read a scripture, when you have not listened to any scripture, or you have not attended any service. And thank God we have the online community. Online Church of Uganda has lunch hours every day from 1 to 2. That one hour is very important. Your faith can be renewed, it can be restored, but you choose to choose any, any other place to be than be in the presence of God. Remember God and spend time with Him. That is another practical step. Another uh, practical step number five is look for things to be grateful for. Look at your gratitude list. Try to make it. Try to journal it. Try to write it down. What things are you grateful for? For God has done in your life. Let's read First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter five, uh, verse sixteen. It says, "Give thanks. Give thanks in every circumstance, for this is God's will for you in Christ." Let me start. Let me start from. 15. Make sure that no one repays evil for evil. Always pursue what is good for one another and for all the people. Rejoice at all times. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in every circumstance, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. How many times have you given thanks for all the past things God has taken you through? God has been so gracious. He has cared for you. You have life. You're not paying. Some people suffered from COVID, but they didn't get to the point of paying for oxygen. Remember all those days and give thanks to Him. And your trust in the Lord will be renewed and you will be strong. Practical step number six, walk in the Spirit. Trust in the Holy Spirit. Be in Spirit at all times. Pray for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Believe for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you will see your trust being renewed because man as can or cannot manage on his own. And you trust you will see it diminishing, diminishing if you choose to lean on your own understanding. But if you choose to walk in the spirit, you will see everything coming easier. Like you see your burden being carried lightly. It will be light to carry. And you will see the hand of God in your doing. And lastly, practical step number seven, wait on the Lord. Now, all the things we have said, you might do them, but then you will lose your faith along the way. If you don't do practical step number seven, wait on the Lord. Let me read an interesting scripture, which I know most of you have read. And it's in Isaiah. 
Isaiah Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 Isaiah 40 uh, 31 But those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength they will mount up with wings like eagles they will run and not grow weary they will walk and not faint praise the Lord As I've said you will do everything that it takes but if you don't wait on the Lord you will be swept off your feet by different voices by friends people will discourage you will discourage you they will tell you you cannot manage but choose to wait on the Lord and that's all sums up what it means to trust in the Lord I mentioned it when I was beginning patience you have to be patient and wait upon the Lord when I was trying to read this topic and try to pray about it I had I had it patiently wait on the Lord and it's one thing I would rather live with you but let me read one more scripture and then we can pray it's in Psalms Psalms 34 Psalms 34 verse 17 the righteous cry out and the Lord hears he delivers them from all their troubles hallelujah the righteous cry out and the Lord hears he delivers them from all your troubles i know you're troubled because a lot of things have been going on and some of them you have decided to keep them to yourself but cry out to the lord because the lord hears and he will deliver you from all your troubles and please everything that happens your number one choice is to trust the lord don't think of calling a relative when you are dumbstruck with a calamity with anything that has befallen you fast seek the face of god fast cry out to god before you call your employer before you call your friends and relatives fast call upon the lord and then other practical steps will come because of the holy spirit he will guide you tell you call the other person he will help you he will direct you like how he directed elijah and god will be your source of strength i thank you all for listening to me let's pray and i pray that god will be your source of trust my taking of glory we have shared your word i know i'm limited and my language is limited because i cannot express how mighty how powerful how sovereign how supreme is your name o lord and we know we are kind of men and we are faced with challenges because we are in this world and every time we step out in the world we are faced with temptations we are faced out and our test and our faith is tried even when we have a testimony we feel we are broken down but lord i pray for every person who has viewed this video that may your spirit be fallen on them lord king of glory that they will choose to trust you against every situation for those that have lost their jobs o lord i pray for the renewing of their faith in you o lord May your word come strong O oh Lord. May your people have the hunger to trust you, to read your word and overcome the enemy with the word of scripture Lord King of glory. We thank you, we love you because you see when we cry out to you, you hear us. And those who wait upon you, they shall renew their strength O oh Lord. Father, we pray that we shall patiently wait on you. Without without fear, we shall stand strong and see your promises coming. May your name be glorified. We thank you for what you have done in the youth ministry and all the church at large. May your name be glorified. We pray all this in your son Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, may God bless you.